Uh, hi, I'm Juliet Hammer. Um, I am a climbing coach currently based in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, I moved here about a year ago and uh, have spent a good amount of time out in Colorado as well. Um, and yeah, excited to be here. Um, well, today we are talking about the topic of beta videos. Um, you're no stranger to beta videos. Um, we've been doing it for quite some time, so I just wanted to get a little bit of your history behind um, how long you've been doing it, why you decided to start recording your attempts, um, and why it's important as climbers that we record ourselves and sort of analyze our beta. So that's sort of just like a broad overview of what we'll be talking about today. Um, but the first question is, uh, you know, kind of starting back from the beginning, when did you start recording video attempts? Um, have you always done it or did something trigger you that you decided, you know, this is important to my climbing progression? Yeah, so the first time I ever really intentionally recorded myself was actually I did an assessment a number of years back before I was a climbing coach um, with Lattice actually and uh, wanted to do the technique assessment. Uh, at the time, I felt like I felt like I was very, quite plateaued, although I knew that I was working on strength uh, and felt like I was doing everything I could, but I did want to get that feedback on technique and they had a technique assessment where I could send in videos of myself and they would give me feedback. So that was the first time I really recorded myself. And that was definitely kind of something that started sparking that that idea of using video as feedback for myself as well. Like, were you self-assessing, I guess, um, while you were going through that assessment and through that like video recording process? Or was it not until you received the feedback from Lattice that sort of that like light bulb moment went off? Sometimes you really do need an outside eye to kind of give you that feedback on, on things. So I think I watched my videos and was like, yeah, it seems fine to me. Uh, and it was definitely very insightful to get that feedback back from someone else um, and and just see what their observations were about about my videos and it's definitely something that I currently use a lot as a remote climbing coach um, and and something I've done in the past to also kind of build my my coach's eye for climbing and climbing videos like have you developed over the years your own sort of like visual checklist of what you're looking for either in your own videos or in your clients videos um for example like oh i i always watch it three times i look at feet i look at body i look at hands or like what is that process like for you yeah so um one of the first things I did when I first began climbing and coaching was I offered a technique assessment um, just so I could get my eyes on as many different climbers as possible. Um, and the way that I do these assessments is I have climbers get on a number of different terrains, different styles of climbing, just so, you know, you, you get a snapshot of of the climbing on um, different types of climbs. And typically I, I just first like to just take a step back and just watch the video as a whole and not really zero in on anything, but just kind of see what the overall impression is of the climb, see like what stands out to me the most to begin with um, and just kind of see overall patterns. And then I'll kind of zoom in on each different spot um, I personally like to kind of start at the bottom and work my way up. So footwork, hips, shoulders, then core, then just like the overall movement and kind of pacing of the climber. Um, so yeah, it is one reason why I do really like using video is that I do have that opportunity to watch it through multiple times. I have the ability to kind of scrub through, slow certain parts down. Um, so it is really useful as, as an analysis tool. Mm -hmm. And how has it helped in your own climbing to be able to play them back and watch them in like slow motion and then analyze it in that way that you would do with your clients? How has it helped you personally? Yeah, it definitely um, 
through the projecting process, I, I utilize video quite a bit. If there's a move I can't do, I'll, I'll start recording myself on it. Um, it's always helpful if, if it's a move I've done in the past and I have video of it and for whatever reason that session I can't do it, uh, just to kind of compare and contrast what's happening. And yeah, again, just using it as a tool for feedback uh, when I'm working on something at my limit. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously this answer changes when it is a busy gym or if you don't have a nice tripod or whatever the case might be, but have you found that there's like an ideal angle or distance that you want to see? Um, do you find that, you know, you're pretty consistent with the way that you're shooting them. And so then you're taking that as sort of the framework for what you want to see from your clients. Uh, one thing that is really helpful for working on more like dynamic type climbing though is getting an angle from the side where you're able to see kind of where the hips are in space with regards to the wall, um, especially on overhanging climbs, just since uh, the hips really dictate a lot of that type of dynamic movement, um, overhanging type climbing. And it's very indicative if you can see that the hips are falling away from the wall too quickly or just just, um, yeah, having trouble uh, directing momentum and that type of thing. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Something that um, I also want to call out is it's something that I love about what you show is sort of like the behind the scenes of like what goes into recording an attempt or or not even, you know, video aside, like what goes into the projecting process. Um, so I love the, the ability to like essentially be projecting with you or see what's going on in your mind. I think that's like another huge benefit of recording and then sharing um, your climbing videos. But you you show us, you know, practicing movement off of the wall, not only to you know save energy, but also to show like miming the movement and anticipating that momentum that you just talked about um, coming from your hips. So just want to give you like huge props because I know it's not easy um, in a lot of different ways to be able to, to share that, but I think it's so necessary to give us that like inside look at what your projecting process looks like. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is just kind of funny. Really those moments come through when um, I keep the camera rolling more than anything, rather than starting and stopping for each attempt. And then you, yeah, kind of get to see what your behaviors are in between. Um, when you're like, oh, I would like want to crop the video to, to, you know, get this snippet of the attempt and then you scroll past something. You're like, oh, that's kind of funny or that's kind of interesting. Um, so sometimes it is fun, yeah, just to, to leave that camera rolling and see what, what you're kind of doing off the wall. Yeah, that actually brings up like it's beneficial maybe for mental game too, like to see how you're reacting to a fall, see what your process is like when you come off the wall. Are you, you know, immediately reacting or are you thinking and you, are you turning back around and wondering where it was that you fell? Like there is a little bit of that sort of mental process that goes into it. So that keeping the camera rolling is a, a really good tip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this kind of leads us into, um, not, not just recording it because I think that we can maybe grasp the, the process and the benefits to recording videos for yourself, but the other side of it is sharing it. Um, whether that's, you know, sharing it with your coach or sharing it to like the destination page within Kaya so that others can see it. Um, do you think sharing beta is spray or do you think sharing beta is helpful? I, I don't think there's anything bad about having more information out there. Um, and I do think it's more so up to the person who's consuming the content to, to use discretion, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, sometimes it is it is good not to look up a beta video for every single thing because sometimes that can lead to becoming reliant on someone else figuring out beta for you. And there is a benefit to, yeah, going to a climb that you've never seen before, haven't seen a video of and seeing if you can figure it out. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're kind of banging your head against the wall, it is nice to have that that video out there to be able to pull up. So it's definitely a balance of, um, yeah, consuming the beta. But as far as sharing it, I don't think there's anything 
wrong with that? Um, and as you know, as a as a huge benefit to doing it within Kaya is that it's not just a random video out in the social atmosphere. It's actually tied to the climb data. Um, so if you are scrolling through the feed or if you are, you know, looking at a friend's beta video and you're interested in that climb, you can add it directly to your own logbook or to your own project list. So um, that's another benefit of, you know, keeping it within Kaya too, is that it's more relevant and you can actually go and find the climb a lot easier. Um, as a coach, when someone is, you know, sharing um, beta either directly with you or if you're looking um, you know, through the feed or through some friends' um, videos and you're tapping into their logbook. Why is that helpful to you to be able to see a beta video and then tap directly into their logbook just to explore the rest of the session? What would that tell you as a coach? It can kind of go back to the mental side of things again, where, uh, yeah, you can maybe see just one snippet or one video of the session. Um, let's say, for example, uh, a client is trying a project that they've been working on for a while, but for whatever reason uh, seem to seems to be regressing during this particular session and being able to look at, yeah, the logbook, see how many attempts there were, see how much time they were spending on it. Were they rapid firing? Were they getting frustrated? Were they just hopping right back on? Um, there's a lot of things that that go into more than just that one that one video for sure. Totally. Um, okay, sort of going back to um, the advice for maybe someone who isn't recording currently, like they maybe they've never done it, they're sort of at that pivotal point, um, like you where they're like, okay, I've plateaued and I need that external assistance or I need someone else's eyes on, on my climbing. Um, what advice do you have for someone who's sort of just starting out or for the, the climber that's like, I know I should, but I'm really hesitant because I'm I don't want to like bust out my phone in the middle of the gym. <laughs> yeah, I, my my best piece of advice is that uh, I think it's very normal to feel self conscious in the gym. It is it is difficult, especially if you're newer to the sport or if you're getting on something that you know is challenging for you. It there is like a fear of failing in front of other people or failing kind of publicly. But yeah, the best advice I have is that usually everyone's just worried about themselves and what other people think about them that they're not really actually paying attention to anyone else. Um, and if it's something that you think is really going to help your climbing, then it, it, if, if someone's judging you for it, then that's their problem because we're all here to, yeah, just try and get better at the sport and learn and enjoy it. So I think video recording is definitely part of that process and there's nothing to be embarrassed about for it. And do you think that climbers should record every attempt only when they're falling on something that's hard or sort of like a mixture of the two? Um, I think a bit of a mixture of the two. I don't think every single attempt has to be recorded, um, especially because eventually we, we want to get to a place where using video um, kind of bridges this gap between what you feel on the wall versus what you see in a video. So oftentimes, um, if you're newer to climbing or newer to recording yourself, uh, there can be some surprises when when you watch video back of, oh, like I really thought that I was really extended and really reaching far, but it turns out when I watch this video, I actually have quite a bit more room to go. And so using video as a tool for that feedback, but we always want to tie it back into trying to become as like intuitive of climbers as we can. So once you kind of become more comfortable with that and what you feel matches up a little bit better with what you're videoing, then you can probably um, video a, a little bit less or video more selectively uh, uh, when you are falling or um, and, and you do need that extra bit of feedback. Um, but again, uh, kind of trying to not become too reliant on a single tool and trying to make sure we have that intuition and in those like internal tools as much as possible, just in case, yeah, there is a time where you can't use video or your phone is dead or you forgot it, um, being able to, yeah, have those skills, uh, on your own is important as well. Mm -hmm. 
I just got a flashback of the first time that I lifted weights without a mirror, like depending on what type of a gym that you go to, you either always have a mirror there or you don't have one in the entire room. And it's sort of that same feeling when you, when you become like really reliant on watching yourself or, you know, you kind of forget what you're supposed to be feeling and you are less in the moment and you're more worried about how it's going to come across in your video. Um, so we're, we're getting a lot into like mental game, a lot more than I thought that we would, but it really does go hand in hand with it because you have to be doing it for the right reasons. And, um, you don't want to lose, you don't want to lose the feeling because, you know, that's what you need most consistently, you know, more than, than your phone. Um, it's, it's really, I think like a good companion to have, especially when you don't have a coach there, um, to be able to have that feedback, to be able to give it to yourself or to send out to your coach, if you have the opportunity. Um, so what, what advice do you have if the gym is busy, but you're like, I really need to get this video. I just don't know where to place my phone or do I get someone to help hold the phone? Like how do, how do folks navigate that situation? Yeah, there's definitely a, a handful of like handy tools you can use. Um, there, yeah, there's tripods. Um, if you feel like that's like too bulky or too invasive, I mean, there are some really small ones that that usually work really well. Um, there's smaller little um, little phone stands that are like seven bucks for a pack of six on Amazon um, that are quite a bit smaller and um, I guess a little more discreet and then like worst comes to worst you can always just use your shoe I have many videos where the videographer was my shoe um, so yeah def definitely different ways to, to get it set up um, it is helpful if you do have like a climbing partner there just to have them take a video again like no need to feel embarrassed um, or, or anything like that just do what you got to do if, if your goal is to um, get that video. Yep. And two things that um, I'll add to that are to make sure that the surface is stable, that no matter how many times you, you record yourself and you get used to it, you just sometimes never know when it's going to topple over and you're going to miss that send go. Um, or you want to be discreet, but you also kind of want to let the people around you know if it's that important to, to you to get that attempt because the last thing you want is somebody just standing right in the middle of your view and then you don't get the shot. And maybe that was like your last burn. Um, these are things that are going to come up, but especially when it's a busy gym or you have to get creative with where you're placing your phone, um, that, that'll, that'll probably happen. So look out for those things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think re recording is becoming much more commonplace. So I think uh, people are more aware of it. And if anything, maybe you're getting a couple of different angles because <laughs> multiple yeah. people are recording. <laughs> yep. Um, any Anything else that, that you want to add or um, any other advice that you have on either getting started with recording your attempts or... Um, you know, what, what goes into the process or what went into your process and your, your progression through beta video analysis? Yeah, I would, I mean, I definitely would say that having a database like Kaya can be really helpful, um, especially with the, the stats of uh, height and, and ape index. Um, Cause I think it can be, um, especially for myself as like a shorter climber, it can be really easy to write off certain moves or certain climbs because I think I'm too short, but then having a, a video of someone else who I know is around a similar height, um, figuring it out or having different beta uh, can be really helpful to see and, and can just, yeah, really help with that confidence um, and the, the belief that it is possible. Yep, totally. That's an amazing call out, um, especially to the sharing component, you know, going back to, is it for you or is it for the community? There's still a ton of benefit, even if the climb wasn't particularly difficult for you. Maybe there's somebody that's climbing at that level that needs to just unlock one move and your beta video might be the difference in them sending or falling. So um, you just never know. And, and it's it's better to share. Um, it's totally not spray. You can just turn your eye if you're not interested in that particular climb. Yep, exactly.